Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and it is the beginning of a brand new year now in 2022. I know it doesn't look like January here in Tel Aviv, it's beautiful out, but it is and that means it is time for me to make my five predictions for the e-bike industry in the new year. Plus at the end of this video, I'm gonna go back and look at the five predictions I made at this time last year and see if I was right. So here's what I think is coming in 2022. First of all, I think we're gonna see bigger battery packs, much bigger. Generally, I think 48 volt, 20 amp hour is gonna to start to become a pretty common standard. It's not gonna be on all e-bikes, but it's gonna become a lot more common than it used to be. Right now, the average is really something like a 48 volt, 14 or 15 amp hour battery. That's about 670 to 720 watt hours. Now, there are several companies that have larger batteries, but I think it's just gonna become a lot more common this year. For one thing, companies are moving towards 21700 format cells a lot more than they used to, which allows them to cram in more capacity without as many cells. Plus, batteries are fairly cheap. I mean, even with supply chain issues that have bumped prices up, I mean, a battery cell costs, what, a dollar, a dollar and a half? These are actually really cheap for e-bike companies that are buying these batteries in bulk. So to add another 13 or 14 cells, whatever it takes to get to that next amp hour level, just doesn't cost companies that much in comparison, and it really helps those bigger batteries stand out. Plus, as e-bikes continue to get more powerful and heavier, we're gonna need that extra battery. My next prediction is that we're gonna see more sort of all-purpose e-bikes, e-bikes that cover all these different areas, things that can carry passengers, cargo, utility, that sort of thing. Years ago, e-bikes were more like niche products where someone wanted an e-road bike or someone just wanted an e-cargo bike or someone wanted just an electric mountain bike. But these days, e-bikes are becoming so common and people are using them for so many different things that a do-everything e-bike is gonna become even more important. Now, we've already seen several of these types of styles, things like the Rad Runner that is great for different types of utility and carrying passengers, the new Ride One Up Cafe Cruiser. Again, it's gonna be a really nice bike for both you know, leisurely riding, for carrying passengers, even some cargo duty. And I think this is gonna become a much more popular category, though really what it is is more categories sort of blending together. So we're no longer left with these very specific one-use e-bikes. I think that's gonna become a really common form factor, but we'll see at the end of next year. The next thing I think we're gonna see is a lot more big funding, big investments of e-bike companies. It's something we've started to see. Companies like Super 73 have raised tens of millions of dollars. Uh, Van Moof has raised hundreds of millions. Rad Power Bikes has raised several hundreds of million dollars. This is crazy money that's being thrown at e-bikes. But because electric bicycle sales are taking off like wildfire, I think we're gonna to continue to see huge funding in the e-bike space. Now, what does that mean for you and me? How is that gonna impact the e-bikes that we're buying? It's, it's hard to say. I think you know, a lot of these companies are gonna use these to build up some of their services, to improve their product line, to improve their accessory lines, those types of things. But where they're gonna spend this money, I mean, it's really anyone's guess at this point. Next, I think we're gonna see more weeding out of some of the smaller brands that have popped up this year. We saw a lot of new import brands, a lot of these sort of no-name e-bikes coming into the fold. This year was really big for a lot of these new companies. And while some will surely survive, I think we're gonna see a lot of weeding out of the weaker ones, especially the ones that came in with like one or two bikes and were largely copies of other companies. You know, we saw things like uh, the Magicycle came out that was like basically a Himaway bike, you know. Uh, not that Himaway is that original itself, but we saw a lot of these little companies come in and try to get a little slice of the pie, sort of a, hey, I've got something to product. And while there were a bunch this year, I think we're gonna start seeing those pare down in 2022, because we'll see which companies have the staying power to actually survive. Lastly, my fifth prediction is that we're gonna see a whole new wave of improved customer service. And that sounds a bit strange as a prediction, but here's why I think this. Customer service became a huge battleground in 2021. And the reason for that was there was not only so many more people interested in buying e-bikes, but there were such huge problems with shipping and supply chain constraints that customers were just really angry and frustrated and, and trying to get in touch with these companies, figure out where the bikes were, when they were coming, what was in stock, etc. And so many e-bike companies were slipping. You know, we heard horror stories about customer service that companies just weren't answering phones, they weren't getting back to emails. It was taking a week to get through with just a small question or, you know, someone just needed one bolt for their e-bike and they just could not get an answer from customer service. So we're starting to see that the companies that really had just, you know, huge complaints stacking up against them, it's hurting their reputations and the companies that have been known for good service, it's really making them stand out even further. 
So I think we're really gonna see big investments from companies in their own customer service development this year to improve the customer experience and really set themselves apart from the rest of the e-bike industry at large. Now, how well they're gonna be at achieving that, again, you know, anyone's guess, I don't know how successful they'll be, but I hope they are because it's a really important part of the entire you know customer experience it's pre-sales to after sales everything in between it's it's critical so i hope to see companies really improve there and i really think that they are going to all right so now let's take a look back at the five predictions i made at this time a year ago and see how well i did the first trend that i think we're going to see in 2021 is the introduction of more mid-drive electric bicycles at reasonable prices now i'm sad to say that i didn't start on a high note because that first prediction it didn't really come true in a large sense there were some e-bike announcements, uh, things like the Ride One Up Prodigy, looks like a really cool um, $2,100, $2,200, something like that, mid-drive e-bike. But we didn't see too many of these new uh, low-cost mid-drive e-bikes, not anywhere near the number I expected to. But I think a big reason for that is that we had just such a big problem with these supply chain constraints that it was hard for companies to develop on this front. But who knows, maybe this coming year we'll see more of that. I'm not confident enough to go again, you know, double down on that uh, prediction, but you know, maybe we will, who knows. The next trend I think we're gonna see is more of an emphasis on 20 inch tires, especially three and four inch wider tires. All right, this one I think I actually nailed. We saw a lot of new e-bikes come out in the past year with that 20 inch fat tire format, both the four inch sort of normal fat tire and three inch fat tires which are really more of like a balloon tire things like the electric xp 2.0 that switched to a three inch um, bikes like you know the hay bike mars there was the juiced uh, was it the rip racer just a ton of e-bikes coming out with this form factor i think the new uh, fido t1 basically it was just all over the place. This has become a super popular wheel size. Uh, the Bike Tricks Moto, all right, there's a lot. I'm not gonna list every one that I can remember right now, but just a ton of them. So that one is probably gonna continue again. I mean, it's just, it's a really nice form factor. It's a small wheel, but it gives you that fat tire to ride over just about everything. And I think that one's gonna be sticking around. Next on the battery side, I'm sorry to say, but I don't think we're gonna see any big breakthroughs in battery technology in 2021, at least for e-bikes. Yeah, there were definitely no e-bike battery breakthroughs last year. I mean, that was a pretty easy bet because there haven't been e-bike battery breakthroughs in a while. Outside of things like, you know, I said the 21700 cells being used in more batteries, giving us a little more capacity, I still don't think we're gonna see any huge innovations in battery packs in 2022. The one exception is potentially what Juiced is working on, which is that dock to turn an e-bike battery into sort of a power bank, so you can plug different devices into it, but that's just you know an accessory for batteries. E-bike batteries themselves, nothing really new is happening there. Next, and again, unfortunately, I think we're gonna continue to see long waits from electric bicycle companies and a lot of back orders still. Yeah, this one I definitely got. Oh man, so many people were waiting so long for e-bikes last year. I cannot believe some of these companies had like six month waits or more. It's crazy. I mean, I get it, you know, there are huge lines of cargo ships off of Long Beach. There are supply chain issues that are causing year, uh, 18 month long waits for parts like brakes and shifters. So, you know, I totally get it, but it was just such a shame for all these customers that were waiting so long to get their bikes. Lastly, my fifth prediction for 2021 is that we're going to see a lot more small e-bike startups and especially new Asian e-bike startups beginning to uh, market in the West. And yeah, this one too, I mean, I think I was pretty correct here as well. There were a lot of these new companies that sprung up, you know, uh, Haybike, Magicycle, Hanbike, uh, Avantrek, uh, what was the, uh, Mac Wheel, all these different e-bike companies that just kind of came out of nowhere and had, for the large part, a lot of fairly similar e-bikes. You know, a lot of these were companies that were that sort of me too thing. I want to get in there and have a product as well. I want to get my slice of the e-bike pie because they're becoming so popular. So we saw a ton of those new companies come in. And like I said in my prediction for this coming year, I think we're going to start to see some of those getting weeded out while we determine which ones have actual staying power. All right, so there we have it. Those are my five predictions for 2022. Let's come back in a year and see how well I did. And if you guys have any predictions, I definitely want to see them in the comments down below. Let me know what you think is going to happen. And speaking of the comments down below, that's right, it's time to announce the winner of the book giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... 
J Films. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. Let me know where to send it. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, just put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like. And anybody else who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win a copy of my books for free, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you here next time.